Greetings, Embers, and welcome to Back to Ashes. My name is Phoenix. If you would like to learn how to become a member or would like to buy me a coffee as a special thank you, those links can be found down below. If you are new here and enjoying what you are hearing, or you've been here already and haven't done so, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. Not only does it help support the channel, but it also reminds you of every time I upload a video. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab your snacks, or tuck in and get warm, and prepare for this dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Haunted House Stories. Right after this intro and ad will play, I'll read the first story and ad will play, and after that there will be no more ads within this video. I live in a weird ass house. When I tell you this house has frightened skeptics, I mean. The number of times I've been chased down the hall by something I can only hear. The voices mimicking family members from around the house, especially from the closet. Seeing family members walking around the house when you know you're home alone. People staying over just to end up leaving in the middle of the night because there's a man at the foot of their bed that won't go away. Door slamming, doorknob shaking. I could go on and on for hours. We were throwing a Halloween party one year, and we all watched a woman in a nightgown walk through the backyard and disappear into the cypress tree. One night I was boiling an egg and accidentally burned myself with the water. Clear as a bell, I heard, Stupid bitch whispered from the dark dining room, not even getting into the tapping on the windows and doors that if you go to check will lead you on a wild goose chase all over the house and the black spot on the wall by the stairs where a black head comes through the wall sometimes. We're hoping to move at some point. Before I begin, I must tell you, English is not my second language, so please forgive me. This all takes place in my family home, which was built in the late 60s, and nobody had died here that we knew of. But some weird stuff happens here. Things that disappear and reappear. Doors that open and close on their own. Cold spots in random places of the house. You name it, we got it. But my favorite one happens when I move to my room. That used to be my grandparents' room, by the way. I was redecorating, putting myself in the room and such when I get to take down the huge wall decorations. Three religious metal engravings. I took those down first because they are scary. And a big wooden cross. I don't mind this that much, just not my cup of tea. I put my decorations up go on with my life and move into my room. Then, the weirdest thing happened. I started to hear something very small running under my freaking bed. Of course, I wake up in the middle of the night with that unnerving sound, and clear as day, those are little, heavy footsteps running under my bed. I was thinking, do I have a rat? It has to be a really heavy rat. So I tried to look under the bed, phone in hand, ready to take a video with a flash and nothing. There was nothing and I can't hear it now. I get back to sleep, thinking that maybe it was a dream, but the same thing happened the next day and the next day again. Now, it was not a rat because I have a cat and she's a huntress and is not my cat because she sleeps in a locked room and my room is also locked. So I take the only rational decision and put back the big wooden cross on the wall, also with my smut books and my creepy masks. Decorations are giving weird vibes, but meh. Never heard the steps again after that.
So, for a bit of context, I'm a 19-year-old female. And during my senior year of high school, I was living with my aunt to finish out my last three weeks of high school as I was graduating early. Living in the house was me, my aunt, her husband, my cousin, in which we'll call H, who was a 11-year-old female. For some background, we lived in a very rural area and the house was from the era when slavery was still in place with two stories. There was the main staircase up to my aunt's and uncle's room, and the one me and my cousin shared as well as a balcony that was situated in between. Then there was a secondary staircase up to the original servants' quarters, an area that was under construction as it was completely separated from the rest of the house, having only that staircase as an entrance and exit. No way to access the rest of the second floor from that area, as well as the attic, which is only accessible from the servants' quarters. I was home alone as I was under quarantine, since it was in the midst of COVID and my father had contracted it, while my cousin, aunt, and uncle were two hours away picking up my other cousin from the airport with her husband. My cousin had pestered me multiple times, with stories about the two sisters who owned the home back when it was a plantation and swore up and down the house was haunted. Me being several years older than her brushed it off as her imagination and there being no truth behind the bizarre stories. But that day I started to question whether or not they were actually true. It was the early afternoon around 3 p.m. and it was still light out and I had my laptop in my lap drawing and listening to music as I did homework. Seeing as I was home alone, I decided to take advantage of having my music all the way up in my headphones, causing the music to sound like it was coming from a speaker if I took the headphones off, since I'd be bothering my cousin if she had been home. This was normal for me to do when no one was around, and this wasn't the first time I had been home alone in this house. This day was different, however, because out of nowhere I heard a loud thud coming from above me, and it had to have been really loud if I could hear it over the music blaring in my headphones. I took off that headphones and looked up at the ceiling, thinking maybe there was a squirrel or something up there which wasn't uncommon. When I heard nothing after a while, I put my headphones back on, only to hear the same loud thud a few minutes later. I again took off my headphones and got up, waiting as still as possible to hear if the thud happened again. And it did. Only this time it came from outside the room, as if it was on the balcony. Of course, I knew that couldn't be true since the entrance to the balcony was sealed and hadn't been used in years because the balcony itself was unstable and needed to be redone. So this couldn't be a person. I decided to leave the room and look out the window of the door to the balcony, only to see nothing. No squirrel, no person, nothing. About now, I was getting paranoid. Whatever was making the noises was disrupting my concentration, and I needed to finish my homework. I went back to the bedroom and sat down, trying once again to concentrate and finish my work. Only as soon as I sat down, the thud came from the other side of my cousin's closet, where the original servants' quarters were, which is sealed, a solid wall, no way to access it unless I went all the way downstairs and through the stairs in the kitchen. Thinking this meant my family was home and my aunt was showing my other cousin the area that could be her and her family's room, I decided, fine, I'll take a break and go say hi. Only, when I got downstairs, looked outside, there was no car. I was still the only one home. So, against all the instincts I had to just bolt outside, I opened the door to the stairway leading to the sealed area of the house. I went upstairs, and when I finally entered the completely cleared out open empty space, I saw absolutely nothing at first. 
There aren't any windows on this side of the house, and so I tried to flip on the lights to no avail. So I turned on my phone flashlight, only to have the daylight scared out of me. Walking around in a completely perfect circle in the center of the room was a woman. Thin and tall with dark stringy hair and a tattered dress. As soon as the light hit her, she stopped and I could hear her neck crack as she turned her head suddenly to look at me. I bolted down the stairs, my feet touching maybe three or four of the entire flight, slamming the door to the staircase and locking it from the outside, which is the only way to do so. I hear slamming against the door and bolted to the bathroom through the kitchen, slamming that door behind me as well. I also locked it, and curling up in the tub, keeping the curtain closed as I tried to call my aunt terrified. She never picked up. I stayed in the tub until my family got home and waited until I heard them calling for me before I even peeked out of the curtain and got out to greet them. I explained what happened and my aunt's response was, Oh, you met Maggie? Don't mind her. It's best to ignore her. She won't hurt you. She just likes to try and scare people. To this day, I've never seen Maggie again, and I won't stay the night in their house anymore. They have since set up a servant's quarters for my other cousin and her family and removed the wall between H's closet and the servant's quarters so that the top floor is all connected. So I would like to get rid of a few things about the old hold house of my grandfather. Prehistory. The house was built about 200 years ago. As far as I knew, there were other soldiers in World War II and a few more often given shelter. One disappeared after a few days without a trace. It was also an old restaurant. About 40 years later, my grandfather found an old cross in the garbage and decided to restore it. After a few weeks, strange things started to happen. Mary and Jesus pictures started to sway without wind or any human influence. The whole house was shaking without wind that day or similar and in Brevia there are also no earthquakes of noises in the basement. My grandfather then mounted the cross on a nearby tree. Since then, it was always foggy around that tree. My grandmother had a cancer and died of it. She had a phone in her room, which was only connected to the phone in the living room if she needed help, but I could not recall anyone else with it. A few days later, when she died, the phone rang in the living room with the number of my grandmother's phone. When you answered the phone, you heard only breathing, then it hung up. First, there was no longer a connection to the phone downstairs, and secondly, the contract of the phone was terminated. My grandpa then passed away in December of 2015. Now, 2023, I myself have already experienced many things. Story number one. Me and my buddy went at 11 o'clock at night to the house to get something. We then got to the kitchen. To get into the kitchen, you have to go from the hallway left through a door. We then closed the door behind us. Suddenly, someone noticed. We panicked and still decided to open the door, but there was no one there. Suddenly, there was a loud bang. We ran quickly back into the kitchen. After a few minutes, we heard footsteps in front of the door. We then looked outside, but again, there was no one to see. We then heard someone from the alleyway ran towards us, but there was no one there to see either. We ran directly home. Story number two. I and a college colleague have met in the summer, and we were chilling in the living room. The living room is directly connected to the kitchen. After a few minutes, we heard above us a loud bang and loud footsteps. My friend panicked and waited outside, and I went upstairs alone and have looked, but 
There is no one there. Story number three. Once a friend and me decided to set up two cameras in the hallway. At the end of the hallway, there goes a straight door into the stall, and on the right side of a stair to the bedrooms and attics. My buddy pointed his camera towards the stairs and to the beginning of the hallway, and I pointed the camera from the beginning of the hallway towards the end. When we both went to go get both phones, my phones were on the floor with the camera pointing towards the ceiling. Both video had cut off at the exact same time and both fell to the floor in the exact same position. Story number four. Me and my friend went to the house at night. We wanted to film on the second floor. At the top of the stair, there were three doors, one at the front and one at the left and then one at the right. We went to the right floor. At the door, there is a chair to block the door. So we got in the hallway where at the end, right and left are open doors. Then went in, I have not discovered something suspicious. When we looked at the recordings afterwards, you saw in the top left door a hand and a face. It was clear to see, but we checked out the other rooms and there was no one there. Sadly, I don't find the recordings anymore. Story number five. When my cousin and I were kids, we slept at my grandpa's house. We then went to the toilet at night when we suddenly heard a very loud scratching on the front door. We then thought we are pranking each other, but then it happened again at the time we were talking. My mother has lived about two months after the separation with my father in the house because it is her parents' house. She said a few weeks she felt very uncomfortable, not welcome, and always watched. She had many sleep paralysis episodes and also heard footsteps, loud noises, etc., and then quickly moved out again. Things happened and happened again and again. Lights go on and off, doors open on their own, things lie on the floor, footsteps, voices, Things are moving. Most of the time, the people are feeling very uncomfortable. At each visit, strange things happen. We would spend the days in the house alone and will take my camera and try to film something. I will post it if some of you are interested. I hope you all help me and us try to figure out what's going on. And please let me know if someone has experienced something similar as this. My partner and I moved into a rental about 30 years ago. We were in our mid-twenties and rented directly from the landlord, who happens to be a cop. Upon entering the house, to the left were two bedrooms at the front of the house, and at the end of the house, a long rumpus room with its own bathroom and toilet. The kitchen and lounge room were to the right of the front of the door, and behind the kitchen and dining room area, was an enclosed patio with a bar. The landlord had left parts of his uniform in the hallway cupboard, which we thought odd. A formal jacket, his cap, and some other police things that I can't remember now. We decided to make the rumpus room our bedroom, as it was spacious and had its own ensuite. There were framed football memorabilia stuck directly onto the walls. We levered off the plaques plastered the damage, and repainted the walls. I used one of the front rooms as my wardrobe. The other front room was never used, not even for storage. It was an uncomfortable room that we never entered and always kept the door closed. It had a bad feeling, if you will. When I was cooking, I would turn away from the stove only to return and find the gas turned up. I would complain to my boyfriend to stop messing with my cooking. It wasn't him. When we were in the lounge room, we would hear noises from the kitchen cupboards and put down baits, thinking we had rats. The noises didn't stop. The baits were never touched. 
We had a friend come over one night, and at some stage, he started furiously waving his hands over his head. We asked him what was wrong, and he said that there was some sort of electrical thing over his head. My boyfriend and I just stared at each other. We had never mentioned it, but we both had experienced it too. It was somewhere between radio static and electrical hum. From time to time, this sound would appear like a cloud of noise over your head. One day, I noticed that this weird, green, kind of slimy mold was on all of our shoes. None of my clothes were affected. I looked at my bike, which I kept in that room, and it too was also covered in this weird mold. I've never seen mold grow on metal before or since then. My armchair in the back enclosed patio was also covered in this mold. No other piece of furniture in the entire house had this mold. Our cat was missing for a day. I searched high and low. I eventually found him deceased behind the bar in the patio area. This was interesting as he refused to ever go in there. So why would he crawl in there to pass away? One night, my boyfriend fell down on his face in the lounge room. I was terrified, as he was obviously in a great deal of distress. I called an ambulance, and he got taken away to the hospital. He had suffered a heart attack in his mid-twenties. We had enough and decided to move out. As we were loading our van, the old man across the road came over for a chat. We had become friendly with him. He said that no one ever seemed to live in that house for long. He said that the cop who had bought the place was only there for two weeks before he, too, took off. He then told us that years ago, his best mate lived in the house. He was a bit of a bugger who hated women, authority, and cats. But he loved his footy. He worshipped footy and died on grand final day when he fell down and died in the lounge room from a heart attack. So, is this a ghost story or an unusual set of occurrences? Only you can decide. What I can tell you is that I slept so well once I had moved away. I didn't even realize how poorly my sleep was until I got out of there. I think we pissed off an entity when we got rid of his memorabilia. I think he hated it. I think he also killed my cat, and I also think he affected my boyfriend. Hello all. Here is some context first. I moved into my college home when I was 19 years old. The house was built in 1926 and I live in a pretty sketchy area. I will hear, see, feel things somewhat frequently in the home. It's an old house. I will normally just say out loud that this is my home. I don't welcome anything negative or whatever, and then I won't have any other experiences for a few months. I have only ever truly been scared inside this house once. I was in the bathroom getting ready for a date, and I saw and heard the doorknob of the bathroom jiggle, like someone was trying to come in. I assumed it was my fiancé, and that he was just picking on me. I opened the door, and he wasn't there. He was in his office, playing on the computer. I've told my fiancé several times about seeing and hearing things. I very frequently get that feeling in the back of my neck, like someone is in the room with me when I'm alone or that I'm being watched. He always just laughs and never believes me until this morning. We were both upstairs in bed. I was asleep. He was lying awake on his phone. Both of our dogs were asleep in our bed as well. There was a loud thud at about 3.30, maybe just before. It woke me up and the dogs up. One of our dogs barked once, and the second one was just growling. My fiancé immediately jumped up, looked out the window, didn't see anything. He stepped out of the room and he came back in, grabbed his gun, and told me to call the cops. The look on his face when he came back in the room told me everything I needed to know. 
Somebody was in our house. I called the cops. We both armed ourselves, and we stayed on the line with the operator. He insists he heard and felt someone walking around downstairs, so much so that he had me call the police, and he would never do that if he didn't genuinely think someone was in here. It took less than five minutes for three cops to arrive, and they had us meet them on the front porch. They came through and cleared the whole house other than the room that had the doggies in it. Nothing. Couldn't find anything that could have made the noise. All of the dogs were dead bolted. Nothing upstairs was touched. Robot vacuum was stuck in the corner, but it wouldn't have made a noise that loud. And I see and check the app, and it had shut off at 3 o'clock on the dot. We looked everywhere ourselves couldn't find anything or replicate the noise at all. He stood at the top of the stairs and had me walk through the house, and he said it sounded exactly like it when I was walking, as if I was trying to sneak through the house, coming through the living room into the dining room. We can't explain it all. We're used to hearing bangs and stuff outside and creaks in the house because it's old but he said it sounded and felt exactly like someone was walking around downstairs, and the initial thud sounded like someone slamming one of our doors downstairs with a vibration throughout the house, if that makes sense. We do have cameras that didn't pick up any movement, unfortunately. One more thing to note, he and I had just talked on Sunday afternoon about how I am convinced the house is haunted and he denounced it entirely. So, what are the odds that this would happen at 3.30 a.m. the following morning, when only he is awake? Has anyone experienced anything similar? If you're a cop, would you be annoyed responding to this call? We feel so bad and they probably think we are crazy. Can you think of any debunking explanation? I lived in an apartment in this old house in New Orleans. I lived with my boyfriend at the time, and we got this insane deal on a beautiful apartment. It was $600 a month to rent a massive, stunning apartment with hardwood floors and huge ceilings. My boyfriend worked in the oil field and would go offshore, often leaving me alone. 99% of the things that happened were when I was alone. One day, I had gotten out of the shower, and the mirror was fogged up. I leaned over while I was brushing my teeth, and when I looked up at the mirror, it had a circle wiped into it, where a face was. That happened a few times. It was wiped away where my face was when I looked up from brushing my teeth each time. Only a handful of times out of the few months that I've lived there. But... When it did happen, it happened the same way every time. While I was sleeping, I often heard things crashing and also often heard footsteps in the attic. My boyfriend also heard the steps in the attic and went to go check it out. No one was up there. I came home from getting groceries, put them on the gas stove, got a feeling of being watched and looked up. From the two to three seconds of me coming in and putting the groceries down, I looked up and all of the cabinets were suddenly open 90 degrees. I closed the doors and tried to recreate it happening, which I couldn't do. I brushed it off as I went back to putting groceries away, got another chill feeling, looked up and all the cabinet doors were open again at a perfect 90 degree angle. While my back was turned, looking at the cabinets, all of the burners turned on full blast. Every night, we heard footsteps of someone walking slowly in high hills up and down the hallway for hours. The apartment next to us was a mirror image of ours, and the walls were thin. My boyfriend thought maybe the guy next to us had a lady over, and I said, no woman wears high heels on hardwood floors walking back and forth. They would have taken them off. Only a man who has a fetish to wear high heels would do that. 
turned out our neighbor worked as a nurse during the night shift and wasn't home anyway. I was going to sleep one day, but I was scared so I left the hallway light on. I heard the footsteps and was too scared to sleep. I looked up and saw an evil being. A man, but he looked like a half-man, half-monster, if that makes sense. Walk into the doorway of the room, stop, and turn toward me. I had never felt so scared in all of my life. I was paralyzed in fear. He came into the room, stood at the left side of the bed, and sat down. I feel like I was being electrocuted the entire time he was looking at me. It felt like eternity. I think I passed out from fear. I woke up the next morning and panicked. I felt like it happened, but kept trying to convince myself that it was just a nightmare. One night, my boyfriend and I were watching a movie in the dark. We heard the sound of the wood floor creaking, and we both looked over to see an evil-looking older woman glaring at us. We both looked at each other. I knew by looking at him that he saw it too. That was the day that I went from thinking I was paranoid to living in full fear. Here is the most terrifying part. Our dishwasher broke and these handymen came to install the new one. One guy says to the other, hurry up, I hate being in this apartment. I ask him to explain why and he said he'll only talk to me outside. He said that a serial killer lived in the apartment and killed women who were all the same age who looked familiar in the French Quarter. He was a cross-dresser and walked up and down the hallway in hills. The FBI found a headless body and searched the entire property for the head, but it was never found. They looked in the attic and found traces of him living up there at some point. In case you're curious, 2835 General Pershing, New Orleans, Louisiana. It's the upper right apartment. I tried to look up the news story online, but didn't have any luck. Maybe somebody here is a better sleuth. Disclaimer, this next story contains animal sacrifice. If this is not your thing, listening discretion is advised or you will have to skip over this story. Apologize to everyone if this is long. My dad and I flip houses for a living. We do everything. So house renovations can take anywhere from a couple of months to a year or more. Here is what happened to us in a 100-plus-year-old farmhouse in northwest New Jersey of the United States. This happened three years ago. This old farmhouse was beautiful, but extremely ran down. It had set vacant prior to our purchasing it for 15 years. Also, there was evidence squatters had been there at one point. The house had good bones, as they say, so it wasn't worth it to tear it down and start from scratch. The first part of our job is the cleanup and demo. I've noticed that every house has its own vibe and energy. However, this old farmhouse was different. It was four floors, including basement and attic. Anytime you were downstairs on the main floor, were the kitchen, living room, and offices, it felt fine, normal even. When you went upstairs, it was different. There was a heaviness up there. I would announce every time I came into the house, hey, it's just me. Is it cool if I come up to do such and such? I also would announce myself every time I came into the house downstairs with a, hey, how you doing today? My dad would look at me like I was crazy because I never did this anywhere else, ever. I don't know why I did it here. I just felt I needed to. Like a deep itch in my brain pleading me to say it, so I did, each and every time. Within the first few days of the clean-out and demo, my dad found something very disturbing. In the master bedroom upstairs, there was a small closet with a light in it. 
Hanging on the inside of the closet door on a coat hook was a bloody dog collar. There were weird symbols spray painted only in this closet. Something looked like it had been burned in a pile on the floor of the closet. I refused to touch it and got extremely upset at the sight of the dog collar. Furious, even. What the fuck would do something to a poor animal like this? I was so bothered, my dad told me to go home for the day, and I did. Ugh, makes me sick thinking how the sick fucks who did would ever have something like that there. My dad and other co-worker cleaned it out. Also, the light in the closet, we never got to work. We do minor electrical repairs and couldn't figure it out. Had a master electrician come. They couldn't get it to work either. New light fixture, new wiring, new everything, and nothing worked. When we had finished cleaning out the living quarters, we decided to work on the attic and basement. Basement was okay. Honestly, the bottom half of the house, basement and second floor, kitchen, office, and living room, felt fine. Neutral, even. Now, the attic was terrible. I could not bring myself to go up there, not once. To not be an asshole, I worked on the other floors of the house. My dad understood without me even having to explain, which speaks volumes because he is a real skeptic. One day, I had to hold the flashlight for my dad while he was in the attic. I stood on the stairs with only my head and upper torso sticking into the attic space. The lights would never work up there either. The attic had one of those pull-down-from-the-ceiling foldable ladders type of ordeal. It was located in the hallway between the master bedroom, second bedroom, and only bathroom. The second we opened it, a rank-ass smell hit us hard in the face. Death. For sure, something must have died up here, we thought. There were those large black flies that seemed to swarm to rot and death everywhere. To say it was an infestation of flies is an understatement. I stood on the ladder, almost falling down multiple times from ferociously swatting those demon bugs away from me. My dad looked everywhere for the cause of the flies for days and couldn't find anything. Before we sold the house, we finally got the flies to go away. This was after three months of trying, by the way. However, when the new owner chose to rent the house out, the flies kept coming back. To this day, almost three years later, exterminators and pest control have been called and the flies still come back. The master bedroom had something else happened after the closet was cleaned up. I talked to my dad into burying the dog collar, by the way. There were four windows in the master, two windows on the north wall and two on the west. The north wall windows one day suddenly had two bats fly into them. They were somehow wedged between the glass and the screen of this old window. We needed to replace all the windows, so we tried everything to free the bats without hurting them. We worked during the day, so bats being nocturnal, we figured it explained why they never moved during the day. When we would come the next day, They seemed to have moved overnight, so we knew that they were alive. These poor bats and me seriously fretting. Any dead bugs I found during the cleanup, I would put onto the windowsill, hoping they would eat. I know that sounds weird, but I don't care. I'm a diehard animal lover. It appeared they were stuck, and it was killing me to see them like that. It made no logical sense how they got in there in the first place. Also, it was early summer, so they wouldn't be hibernating either. My dad and I decided to go get a ladder and try from the outside of the house. He finally got it so that the bats could undoubtedly get out. The bats never moved from the window screen for weeks. Then, one day, they were gone. I thought for a long time my dad had discovered that they were dead and disposed of them, 
as to not upset me. He promises he didn't do this, and that after weeks of them moving barely inches, they had indeed left on their own volition. We finished the house and sold it. The new owner rented it out to tenants. Tenants would move in, stay for a month or two, then break their leases and move out. This has happened four times since we finished. After each move out, we were contracted to come do a fresh coat of paint, deep clean, patch up a hole, or any other fix needed. The feeling in the house never changed. Also, I wanted to add that we never told the new owner all about the weirdness prior to them purchasing. My dad is a skeptical kind of guy and has no explanation for any of this stuff. My dad also now announces himself any time we go into the house. We met every tenant that lived there at some point in their rental time. They all seemed like normal people and not the type to just break their leases for no reason. I felt like the house needs a cleansing or, I don't know, something. To whoever did that to that poor dog and house dirty, may you reap what you sow. Okay, so I'm pretty sure some of you will say that what I am saying is fake, but I promise it's not. I've always been a keen to the spirit realm. For example, when we play Ouija board, not a very good idea, by the way, the board is always unresponsive until I play. Like, when the others are playing, it doesn't reply or it responds in gibberish. My mom has asked me before if it wanted me to play, and the planchette immediately went to yes. Anyways, I should probably talk about when it all started. It all started when I was about seven years old, living in an old house. We caught an orb on camera, and it wasn't a dust speck because it was moving irregularly. I would always hear things talking to me in a loud whisper, and one of the only experiences that truly terrified me is as the following. I would always have a radio on at night, and a commercial break came on. This so-called commercial was filled with people screaming in a deep, droning voice, saying things I couldn't understand. It could have been just for a horror movie, but I've never heard of it from anyone else. Another thing that I learned from my mom had happened was when I was at school. My toys would be moved from upstairs to my room to the bottom of the stairs. I also remember my brothers sleeping in my bed with me a lot of times, but whenever I talk about it now, neither my mother or brother remember that ever happening. And I don't know if this counts, but when I walk past this certain house, something inside me telling me to never look at it. Don't ever acknowledge the house. The house has a bunch of religious things in the porch, and I always get an evil vibe from it. Another night, I was looking out my window, and under the streetlight, I saw a little girl dressed in a white nightgown. And when she looked up at me, she disappeared. Then we moved out of that house. We moved to a different town with my mom's boyfriend. And this is kind of when things took off in terms of spiritual encounters. I would be laying in bed, and again, I'd hear the whisper yells. It was always happening each night, and one night I was so scared, I ran to my mom's room. I had to go into the basement, and all the voices talking to me got louder and more aggressive. I don't hear voices anymore, so I'm not schizophrenic. I would be laying in bed, and my bed would violently shake. And when I went to my brother, because I was a scared kid, his bed would start to shake as well. Then, the water faucet would drip, and I'd go out and check, and it was dry in the sink. Another experience I had, we were watching a movie in the living room when I saw something pass in front of the window. 
I asked them if they saw it, and none of them had. Then, when we moved out, we moved to my grandpa's. This is a very old house. It's been in our family since probably the 1800s, so there's a lot of history and probably spirits in this place. I'd hear something crawling in my vent, and I'd hear something or someone walking around in the attic. This happened years after we first lived there, but it still happened at my grandpa's house. I had my door locked, and I heard a Big Wheels toy roll up to the door. We don't own a single Big Wheels. My door then opened, and something crawled into bed with me. Another experience was when I got up to go to the bathroom, and something was on the other side of the door, preventing me from opening it. I've grown used to the paranormal, so I just pushed it as hard as I could. I got the door open, but something slammed it shut. I didn't try to open it again. And just the other day, I was gaming with my door open, and I saw something white approach my door frame. I looked at it, and it disappeared. My cats were in my room, so maybe that's what prevented it from coming in my room. In another town we lived in, the dishwasher started by itself. I saw some black figure on top of my fan blades, and a music box started by itself. My closet door had also slammed shut by itself on multiple occasions. In a different town, I had two different rooms in our apartment over the time we lived there. In my first room, I was lying in bed when I felt water dripping onto my forehead. I touched my forehead, dry. I touched the ceiling, dry. Then I was getting water another night, and it was around two in the morning. I heard my mother call out for me, but it was so obviously not my mother. Something about her voice was off. I stopped in my tracks, not leaving the room, and saw a black figure slink back into her room. In the other room I was in, I was lying in bed and I heard something from the dark part of my room call my name. Another time when I was walking past my room, I saw a figure walk from my closet to my doorway. Then in another room, there were fairy lights that could only be turned on by flipping the switch on. And none of these went into the room out of respect for the girl who used it. The lights were on. A different time, I heard my cat play with her toys in the living room. The only thing is that I had all the cats in my room with me. Another time, I was playing Ouija board with friends on Halloween. One of my friends heard me say something to him, but I didn't say anything. And a different time, I was driving home with my mom, and I saw the same little girl in a white nightgown in front of the neighbor's lawn. In broad daylight. All in all, I've had quite a few terrifying experiences with spirits. They always stop bugging me when I ask them to, but they always come back. None of my other family experienced this, and I've always been able to hear and see things that others can't. I've been told by a priest, I had never met this guy before that I have an angelic glow around me. People immediately feel at ease around me, and oftentimes strangers will tell me what's bothering them in their life out of the blue. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I just know I have a connection to the spirit realm. I don't need help exercising the spirit. I've become fond of him. I actually named him Peter as a child and that name just stuck. I really just needed to get this out to people who would believe me and listen to me. If you've made it this far, thank you for taking time out of your life to listen. Any insight as to what it is and why I have such a connection to the spirit world would be much appreciated. Thank you so much.
When I was younger, my parents were still together, and my younger brother and I spent a lot of time together at our dad's brother and father's house. My dad's brother had four kids, so we spent a lot of the time there with our cousins. There was a bedroom that was converted into a playroom, just a smallish room with toys, lots of them. We would always have weird feelings in there, but one time in particular, a few of us were standing in the middle of the room when all of a sudden, the toys started moving on their own. Items pushed far onto the shelf, moved forward before falling off to the ground. It all happened in slow motion, like an invisible string was pulling everything to the center of the room. We were creeped out to say the least and told the parents, who somewhat dismissed it. Another time, I was playing with a stuffed lion in my playroom. I put it in this little wooden shelf and locked it. I went out to the living room, where everyone else was, then went back in that room to find the shelf unlocked and the lion three feet away from the door. I was maybe three or four. I remember being angry at whoever was moving it and started asking everyone back in the living room if they had moved it. They said, no, go ask your cousin. My older cousin was in his room with music playing loudly and was annoyed I even knocked on the door. Definitely wasn't him. One of the scariest memories I have also was in this house. I get chills just thinking about it. I was sharing the bottom bunk with my cousin at the time. The door was open and faced out into the hallway. I will never forget this dark silhouette of a man turning from the living room down the hallway and started walking down the hallway towards us. We were both awake and looked at each other, scared. He had glowing red eyes and was very tall, but somehow resembled my grandfather's figure. He looked as if he were staring us down the hallway and then stopped and turned into the playroom. We told our dads about it the next day. I remember my dad picking me up to explain how tall he was. My parents divorced. I haven't seen my father in over 15 years. My biological grandfather is also dead, and I don't communicate with these cousins anymore. I never want to see that house ever again. Here's a little background. Let me say first, I'm not terribly fanciful. Neither is my dad who works as a CFO, is a CPA and a lawyer, for a public company. When my siblings and I were little, we all thought we saw a ghost in my sister's room. After recently moving into the house, we were all younger than seven at the time. My sister always felt ill at ease in the room, to the point she cried whenever my parents made her sleep in her own room for many years. She specifically remembers one time where she was asleep, and then someone, who she thought was my dad, carrying her downstairs and putting her in the living room armchair. She specifically remembers that she kind of woke up and was angry that my dad brought her downstairs. She woke up in the chair the next morning by my dad who asked why she was still sleeping downstairs and then said that he never brought her downstairs. As far as ghost origin, the house is old, so there could be stories we don't know. We know there was a Native American tribe in the area, and we know the house used to be on an orchid. We also knew that in the 70s, a resident of the house left angrily after a fight, zoomed his car down the driveway, went over the curb, and hit and killed a young boy across the street who was playing with one of those pop-pop fake lawnmower things. 
We also know that the house was built in the 1870s, and when my parents renovated the upstairs bathroom, we found a letter that was sent to the local church nailed inside the wall. My parents have that letter framed at this house. The event that happened yesterday. My mom and dad were both home, and my dad was in the attic. We went down to the second floor and into my parents' room when he saw a movement move on the other side of the room that leads to the hallway of my sister's room. It was a figure in what he thought was my mom's pajamas go from my sister's room area to my brother's room and bathroom right in that hallway. He called my mom's name, nothing. So we went and checked out the hallway, then heard my mom downstairs. He did not see anything in any of the rooms. He went downstairs and my mom said he looked visibly spooked. The scariest part of this story for me is that it happened to my dad, who was not one for striking fancies. And he swears he saw something move, wearing some sort of pattern, move across in his line of vision. He got LASIK surgery a few years ago, so he has good vision now. This story still creeps me out just writing it down. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true haunted house stories. I'd like to take a moment and give a special shout out to the reformed members of Back to Ashes. Tina Mead, Colt Stone Wolf, Mrs. Innerscare, Les Crispin, Tammy Slayton, CAG, Denise Sess, Samantha Play, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Norma D.W., Christy Elias, Cindy Cleveland, and Patty's niece. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you are awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. In the meantime, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good evening. Peace, love, and light to you all.